Moving on from that and just jumping straight into stuff because I need to I need to talk about this because I think this is super fascinating. So I've been kind of keeping my eye on the No Jumper kind of drama that's been going on because I'm a fan of No Jumper to begin with. I was a fan of No Jumper platform before it went tits up or even before the hype because I always thought their interviews, especially when Adam 22 was doing it in the beginning and the podcast they'd have were really entertaining. It kind of gave you a different perspective on what life was like in LA because my LA sort of like perspective only came from stand-up comedians and those guys are all old white dudes who are kind of uncool. It's not really the best endorsement to kind of seeing what regular life for people who maybe come from the same place i do over here in the uk live like over there so no jumper podcast and the platform overall is what gave me that and then of course over time they didn't end up being a platform that kind of highlighted and sort of shone a light on all these kind of up and coming rappers from the kind of soundcloud era you think of excess and tashion and a few other people who kind of got famous on that platform and that was really good to kind of see their ascent um to stardom kind of documented in real time you see them in the vlogs and then you see them on a podcast and then you see them do shows together even someone like um like uh, I can't figure the guy's name now, but loads of them anyway. We're all kind of connected to No Jumper, so I've been a big fan of them overall. But this new iteration of No Jumper has kind of fizzled out, then turned into this whole like drama reality TV thing. Even though it kind of helped to boost No Jumper's profile and kind of gave them more, kind of gave them resuscitated them as a platform because I felt like they were kind of dying or on life support for a while. But then Adam Twenty Two kind of had this idea of bringing on these extra or other co-hosts who weren't associated with the brand at all or the platform and just people that he kind of liked or he kind of went to give a shot and it started off with ad then he had a few other people like internal like house phone working there who was kind of associated with no jumper and he had a show and all these other things and they kind of slowly started to build it out until they got to a point where adam decided to go buy a building and they'd have all these shows housed under kind of one sort of like network but then over time unfortunately adam's personality his kind of first and desire for having views over anything really kind of butted heads with a lot of those guys who are from the streets um they have a different way of kind of navigating life different protocols different things they kind of stand on and those kind of conflicts and that you know him coming from the you know clicks by any means dj vlad tmz type of thing and those guys coming from the streets or just having morals and principles and not wanting to be hoed out it kind of just clashed and it kind of eventually all fell down down now the kind of fallout from it has been fascinating to watch fascinating because at the core of it you could say they've all contributed to some part in in their own ways to no jumper basically dying a very slow death because now everybody's basically left and the only people there now is that fat fuck um flacco um yuri of course who you know is bloody essentially um adam 22's cock holster and of course sharp who's a bit of a solid guy who's kind of stood there everyone knows basically left one of the funny things about this to kind of view from the outside and as a fan is that i felt like everybody had a part to blame had a part to play in the blame game of like ha- how it kind of fell out but for some reason Adam 22, who plays a very considerable part in kind of, you know, he he has a very considerable part of the blame to kind of take, doesn't want to take it, doesn't want to say sorry, and just generally is unaware of how his actions may have impacted other people who are on that platform, especially if those other people are friends. He just doesn't seem to understand or comprehend it. So one thing I want to play here. I've got a few clips I want to play back to back. But the first clip I want to get up is Adam22 sitting down with Sharp on No Jumper for, I think, an episode of Sharp Tank. I think it is. I'm not too sure. But essentially, they sit down and kind of hash it out and talk about what happened and kind of just clear the air. And one of the good, one of the clips I thought was quite interesting to kind of pull up is this along on the main video, which is around 24, 10 minutes. I'm going to just queue it up here on my side. It's around 24, 10 where essentially Adam 22 asks um, Sharp why he didn't leave because he was kind of feeling pressured at the time to leave also because everybody that was black essentially was leaving. So he kind of felt a bit of the pressure. So he kind of asked him why he didn't leave. And then I'm kind of going to go in a bit of my commentary as well. So this is Sharp talking about why he decided not to leave No Jumper, even though everybody else left because they felt somewhat betrayed by... um, Adam 22 disrespected not acknowledged blah 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 this is Sharp's opinion of why he stayed like what we didn't know this is yeah. the most popular thing out right well, now well what I'm describing is probably not that out of the ordinary it probably happens all the time <laughs> for real man so celebrities like they probably gotta deal with that shit all the time but anyway um okay here's a question that I wanted to ask you 
you obviously had a lot of people kind of p- trying to put pressure on you, acting like you were supposed to leave No Jumper too. What was the sharp thought process when uh, hearing all that? Um, to be honest, we'll start it from the beginning. Yeah. And how I felt about it but it was like I tried to stay out of it. Mm. Man, I really did. Like I didn't want to, even though I knew I was going to take heat, for shit already just because like this was i I couldn't ignore this one Mm -hmm. like you know what i'm saying i couldn't be like oh well business as usual business (laughs) as usual like you know what i'm saying like i don't know what's going on like i'm just mind my business it kind of drug me into it so you know dealing with it from you know some of the viewers and being like oh sharp you need to leave or sharp you need to start your own shit i'm like i've had no problems here in this building like, none. I don't have any problems with our agreements. I don't have any problems with, like, I don't have, I don't I don't sit here with, I don't sit here right now on this couch with malice in my heart towards you. I just don't, bro. Mm-hmm. If I did, I'd rather call you. You know how I get out. I feel like some shit ain't for the camera, but some things had to get leaked and or just talked about, rather, and, you know, we talked about it. And like I said, man, I just felt like I, I came in by myself. Mm. Like, you know what I'm saying? Nobody patted me on the back, bro, and be like, yeah, 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 come in. Yeah, let's do this. You know what I'm saying? I had to show my worth. Right. I'm- and I think that's basically the main point. The main point of this is that Sharp wasn't anyone's friend. He basically came on the jumper off of the back of that iconic viral um, White Underbelly interview that he did. And if you're not familiar, White Underbelly is a really cool channel where the guy essentially um, talks to and kind of highlights this plight and the struggle of people who are going through drug addiction, people who are in gangs, people who came out of prison, people who just are kind of what the internet would deem to be down bad. But he does provide them with the opportunity to kind of tell their story. And I feel like it's a real good platform to go and check out um, because you get a lot of, uh, you know, information and insight into what those lifestyles are like. And I think a lot of those people, even though they're American, I think that kind of um, stories, those narratives could be applied to anybody around the world. So if you are, you know, maybe, you know, on the flipping um, crazy path and you're going down a place of kind of self-destruction, those type of channels are good, quite a good place to sort of like get sobered up and figure out, hey, if I keep going down a path that I'm going down, this is the direction I can kind of go in from these people. And there's hundreds of videos on there, people kind of saying the same sort of message and kind of talking about how their life's basically spiraled out of control after making a couple of bad, you know, d- d- decisions or maybe just some bad luck overall so it's a pretty good one and he went on there and spoke about his basically you know his journey and his life and what he kind of came through and what he basically did to get where he wanted to go to and it kind of came across really well very genuine and of course you know adam 22 kind of scooped him up and put him on his platform so i didn't expect him to leave and i think actually i had way more respect for sharp the fact that he kind of decided to stay only because he said he didn't have any issues with Adam directly. And oddly enough, I think even though the drama didn't affect him, it probably did benefit him because of all the bad business and the way he basically, I think Adam 22 didn't really respect or do right by the guys on the platform who some of them considered him friends. I think he's going to benefit from because Adam's not going to want to fuck it up again. You want, you don't expect him to, especially because Sharp is like one of the only ones left there who is still kind of a draw when it comes to pulling numbers because, you know, that platform and Adam are kind of obsessed with how much views they get on stuff, which is what it is, but I guess it because you, know, you have to pay the bills. But if that's the case and you're obsessed with the views and that's the main prerogative about pe- keeping people on, someone like a Sharp is definitely someone you have to keep on board because like it or not, if you don't like his approach or how he goes on, he is blockbuster when it comes to, or sorry, he's Netflix when it comes to bloody um getting in the views and pulling people in people definitely do like him when he's on there ranting and raving and saying the things that he says or dropping the jewels and the wisdom that he does so people definitely do get that so i understand that and i also liked when he went on um ad show he spoke really well to ad to the point where you know ace boy pun had to step in and basically get him to hang up the phone and kind of turned it into a beef thing because you know he did raise some good points to ad like hey couldn't you have dealt with this in a way that didn't result in you kind of deciding to bounce that this could have been dealt with in another way because i think essentially 
the whole reason why that kind of all fell down and went to shit was because I think personally because of Adam. Adam 22 should have never spoken to Lush about any business pertaining to the employees or staff members there. The fact that he did speak to him and then Lush obviously is somebody who can't keep a secret and is clearly somebody who's already kind of a little bit fragile in his own way. Once that story got out and it kind of was turned into Chinese whispers, it kind of always was going to land on AD's feet looking a bit funny style. So it was impossible for him to not take that disrespect and not feel had been slighted even though he hadn't been slighted maybe who knows you know but i did like the fact that sharp was real enough to kind of you know not confront but tell um give basically um ad a different side of the story and basically say hey you could have maybe dealt with this in a better way as well that could have maybe helped you in the future because there is also a scenario i could imagine where ad could have stayed for a few more months or whatever you know run it up get some checks in and whatnot and then bounce later on it didn't have to be just off the back of everything that happened right in that moment it was a little bit reactive but you know it all kind of helped and kind of worked out for everybody in the long run going forward then the next is the next clip i want to play the one that's the most important one, the funniest one personally for me, is this clip. This clip is absolutely hilarious. So this is a clip of Adam essentially saying that he misses A.D. Terrell. And I say, I, I think it's mostly Terrell he misses in this clip. He say he misses Terrell um, and all the guys there. And he kind of feels like Terrell shouldn't be feeling a way about him because they never had an issue. It was an issue he had with Housefern, of course, prior, and an issue that he had with um, AD, but they had no personal issue, so he shouldn't be kind of like not wanting to speak to him. They should still be friends, which I think is legitimately the most delusional lack of accountability thing I've ever seen in my entire life. Like, this guy is absolutely on another planet if he thinks that Tyrell should still be friends with him um, based on what happened and how basically everything kind of you know um, how everything transpired over time this is really really crazy but this is Adam 22 talking about how he feels like he didn't do some people wrong and they should still be cool with him yeah and I mean I'm gonna be real with you like okay so we, we covered the house phone thing and talked about how him leaving was pretty understandable and everything mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. with the other guys who left more recently I'm gonna be real it's like I don't really feel like I disrespected them in the same way that shit went down with house phone you know i think that realistically you know a few weeks out you can look at it and be like they had a good thing going they had their own momentum they picked an opportune time to dip out and i can't really like identify the thing that i did to them that was so fucked up that they had to leave or but that by proxy you should have to leave as well that's the mad thing about this guy he still doesn't get it like, I, I can sit here honestly and say that Adam 22's personality, he has never really, I've never liked his personality as, like, he's never kind of been somebody that I could say, oh, he seems like a likable kind of guy. You kind of put up with him because of the content he put out. And in the beginning stages, he used to actually put, he used to actually do really good interviews. He'd be one of the only ones, I think, within that hip hop sphere who was interviewing the artists who would interview, who, I, who actually sounded like, because a lot of these guys in that hip hop media space, if they're interviewing like younger artists who are coming up, they kind of have it as a point of pride. That they don't listen to their music. The, the younger artist kind of has to earn their respect. I think you saw that happening with that viral um, interview of like Lil Uzi Ver and Ebro on like Hot 97 back in the day where like Ebro is basically acting a little bit like, not aloof, but he's got a bit of an attitude. He's acting like, you know, Louis Uzi Vert has to kind of earn his respect or earn his listen. This is a really bizarre attitude that a lot of these hip hop media guys have with the younger people. I'm not sure what that's about, but regardless, Adam 22 at the time I fought beforehand a few years ago was one of the only people in that space of hip hop media who I felt like actually listened to the, the albums or read up on the person that they were going to interview. So he did really good interviews. Um, he had a pretty sick platform in terms of the vlogs that they did and the other shows that they did. So even though his personality and him as a human being is kind of unlikable, he kind of comes across like a bit of a cunt, you kind of put up with it because of the product was so good. Cool, right? You, you put up with it because the product was so good. But in this situation... Even I can say, even not liking the guy, that he's not totally to blame, but he has some blame in it. Maybe a huge portion of it, but not all of it is his fault. But the fact that he can sit there and he's still not aware that a whole number of things happened at the same time that contribute to everybody leaving, but he also contributed to all those things is ridiculous. Like he doesn't understand it. He just doesn't get it. There's no kind of comprehension. And maybe that's just like a 
narcissist thing you just don't see the error in your ways like everybody is wrong but you but sometimes i think to myself if you work somewhere or if you're the boss or if you're the founder or if you're whatever the leader of a place and everybody leaves because they have an issue with you surely at some point even if you're a narcissist surely at some point you have to say to yourself hold on maybe there is something wrong with me maybe i did something to make everybody leave but he can't actually rationalize that. It doesn't make any sense in his head that maybe that was the reason why. Now, I'm not saying that he's totally to blame, but like I said before, I think he contributed in some part to it breaking down. And of course, everybody else contributed some part to it, but he played a huge part in it because he's a flipping leader. But hey, well, what do I know? Let's continue. That was a lot. I was just like, ah, oh, man, like, Cause I fuck with everybody, homie, and I, mm. I'm sure, like, I ain't saying nobody says it, but I'm just sure motherfuckers be like, well, damn, you know, fuck sharp then, you know what I'm saying? Like, straight up, like, but I, man, I had nothing, I have, I have had, will, nothing but love for everybody that was here, being here, leaving, doesn't matter, you know what I'm saying? Like, I, I, I don't change, bro, mm. I don't just change on people overnight, so I'm always gonna have love for them, I'm always gonna shoot my support, but... Hey man, over here, this this is I, I touched some bread in this motherfucker. Mm. So I ain't about to, you know. I, oh, we have a no. good relationship. And I have to respect that too about Sharp too. He's protecting his money, and obviously he has no personal problem with Adam 22. There were parts of this interview where he did come across a little bit like a cheerleader. But again, you're at work, you're in front of your boss. Sometimes, you know, some things can get a little bit you can sometimes get a bit ahead of yourself. So I'm not going to blame him too much for that. But I do respect the fact that he didn't jump on the whole like, oh, I'm going to quit too because everyone's quitting thing. Because sometimes that can be a mistake people can make where you can get a little bit too emotional about things and make hasty decisions. And in the financial situation we're in now or in the co economic situation we're in at the moment, no one should be making any hasty decisions about their job. If it doesn't, you know, if you can suck it up and get to work and clock in and clock out and collect your check, do it if it's possible if it's if, it, if it's untenable then of course hand in your resignation and look for another job asap but people shouldn't be just quitting jobs especially stuff like this especially stuff like this where you just sit around and talk about shit that you see on dj academics's instagram stream or flipping instagram feed sorry you shouldn't be quitting those type of jobs hastily especially if they're paying you pretty well just stay on your thing mind your business and kind of keep your head down and we do good business we but, do great fucking business but th that's just kind of my thing all these all these weeks removed from the other situation is yeah. like i feel like we're supposed to still be friends right yeah i don't feel like those people should be putting dirt <laughs> on my name or trying to like you know crazy hold guy. the grudge out the door and to be real with you a bunch of them have been very very considerate with what they were able to say or crazy what they were willing guy. to say etc but when i look at it it's like so am I, am I not supposed to be cool with T-Row? Because I feel like I'm, in my mind, Crazy I don't feel guy. like anything happened between he, me and him that should prohibit us from having a friendship. And there's been multiple times where I thought about hitting him up over the past couple of weeks, Insane. even just about some shit that don't have anything to do with anything to just be like, hey, check this out. And then I'm like, fuck, like, I feel like I'm not supposed to hit him up. I feel like the narrative is that we're not cool, even though we've had little conversations here and there since then. But I don't The guy is delusional and he's crazy. But what you can say for sure, just to give him some sense of compassion, is that he's definitely super lonely. He's got all the money in the world. He's got all the clout in the world. He's got a beautiful wife. He's got a kid. He may have another kid coming. Who knows? Um, he's married. Everything's going well in life. But he's lonely. He built this platform and it was kind of all around him. It was no jumper, but it was basically his platform. And over time, he brought all these hosts on and they basically got to share the limelight with him. And he was able to create this whole group of people. Like, you should see how happy Adam was in that flipping Christmas vlog that they did. When they all came in the office, they were all handing secret Santa gifts to each other. He looked really happy because he looked around, probably thought to himself, wow, I did this. I got all these people from all these different walks of life under one roof. They're all, they're all working underneath me, but they've all kind of contributed to success that no jumper is now and it was probably way more fun that way what's the point of being rich and famous if you don't have anyone to share it with and obviously now that everybody is left he's essential on his own and those guys that he were close he had this host that he hired on his platform he kind of saw some of them as friends but now the fact that they left with a bad taste in their mouth they don't want to be his friend anymore and he's legitimately alone he has no one else to speak to yeah you know he doesn't want to sit there and have a chat with flipping flocko he's obviously a bit you know 
on the spectrum. So is flipping Yuri. That's not going to be a flipping fun conversation to have. Um, I, you know, all my suspect looks like looks like the kind of guy who clocks in and clocks out. Sharp looks like the kind of guy who clocks in and clocks out. So he essentially has no one else to talk to apart from Josh, who is essentially a family member. So he's that's where he's feeling now. But for if he's sitting there legitimately and f- thinking that T Row owes him a friendship still after everything's going on, this man is legitimately on another planet. Because if you think about it, forget AD. If I'm T Row and I saw the way Adam did house phone, forget AD. AD, of course, that's his friend. They're from the same area. They grew up the same place. Blah blah blah. Whatever. Cool. But let's look at house phone. If I'm T Row and I saw the way. Adam 22 did house phone with having that trans um, person on the platform who said what they said about house phone and how they may have hooked up in the past, knowing that house phone had a current girlfriend at the time and S girl cheeks and what that did to his life and how it basically eventually led to the, he's basically his relationship breaking down and may have contributed to house phone relapsing and all this malarkey. And they were good friends for a long, long time. If I saw the way that Adam 22 did house phone, my alarm bells would be ringing straight away. Like, wow, this is a guy he's actually, known for like 10 plus years they're actually friends they're not just colleagues they've been on the grind together they got it out the quote-unquote mud together on no jumper and he did him that way my alarm bells will be running will be ringing straight i'll be like whoa this guy is not to be trusted this guy is definitely somebody that could stab me in the back this guy is definitely somebody that could scum me over i'm going to be watching my p's and q's around this guy i don't want to be caught in a situation where you are going to do anything to me that may flip in you know throw me off or kind of ruin my life that's what i'll do then you add on top of that what he did with ad the ad situation i'm probably in a minority where i feel like i've watched enough of the podcast to see that ad was starting to phone it in towards the end i think even he would admit that he was starting to kind of phone it in he wasn't really trying he basically was coming in essentially collecting his check doing the bare minimum maybe it was because he was a bit kind of over it maybe it was because he was putting a lot of energy into his own community thing and everything else going on over there or maybe just in general you know whatever it just maybe his personality i don't know but he definitely needed to kind of get given a kick up the ass to kind of maybe bring it quote unquote more on that kind of platform and kind of bring his a game on there and adam if they were friends owed him that conversation of like hey man i'm i'm thinking of of moving the channel to another direction but obviously you've been a big part of this change and how we've kind of got to this point and i kind of think you're owed at least the chance to try and turn around your your show your own performance i'm going to tell you now that as a friend like hey i'm thinking about maybe letting you go or moving you on but i want to give you the chance to kind of earn your spot or whatever maybe just something but he deserved a conversation a direct one that didn't happen maybe it happened in bits and pieces or whatever it may be but what ended up happening was that he ended up telling lush somebody that was hired new onto the platform what he actually thought of ad and his free four or three or four same jokes he tells and all this malarkey and sometimes it doesn't really matter how you say something or what gets no it doesn't really matter what, what you say it usually matters like how it's done and i feel like if you're ad and you feel like you and Adam are, are friends, hearing third, fourth, fifth hand that Adam told Lush about your performance and about letting you go is always going to sting. It's always going to come back sounding crazy that somebody you count a friend went behind your back and told somebody else. Or even if it's something that they told you, because now Adam's saying this new narrative he's spinning is that, oh, I actually told AD that I wanted him to move him on from the show and take him off no, the Monday show, whatever it may be, before I told Lush anyway. Even if that's the case, the fact that it still came from Lush was really weird and bizarre. And I still stand on that. I don't think it's I don't think it's um I don't think it's a uh, professional in any way, shape or form for the boss and for the leader of a company to be discussing other employees performances with other employees performances that should be something you should be discussing with management with upper management with other founders or whatever it may be people within that kind of leadership position but you shouldn't be talking to you know if you're a boss you should be talking to the receptionist about um the guy in the printing room that you want to fire or whatever it may be you should be talking to somebody else um that's in a leadership position because that's how things are done in a sort of professional workplace manner and you want to give people the respect that they deserve so you don't want to you know rumors to be flying around so you can kind of keep a close lid on what's going on but that didn't really happen of course and then of course that kind of led to the overall downfall of it so for him to sit there and legitimately think that you know, uh, AD and Tiro being as close as they are, that they wouldn't A, see the issue with a house phone and think, oh, 
that is really bad omen because if if, if Adam could do that to House Fun, who is his friend for 10 plus years, what can he do to us? If he didn't see that as a bad omen or the fact that he treated the way Adam AD the way he did, I don't see why this guy legitimately thinks that T-Roll owes him anything. It's quite bizarre that he'd even have that kind of mindset. It's really, really insane that he'd actually think that. And it's, I'm glad he said that because I think he said that in an effort to kind of, you know, pull at fucking T-Roll's sympathy or something or make him feel a way about something or whatever it may be, right? But I love the fact that um, T-Roll didn't really kind of bite on that bullshit and instead... Um, said this is a reply this is probably the best reply that anyone could say in the face of adam basically trying to pull the sympathy card trying to play victim and trying to act like he didn't do anything to contribute to the fact that everybody ran away from no jumper because he's just a really difficult person to get along with and he doesn't know how to treat people well basically and on the human level he doesn't know how to kind of like be nice to people or just treat them in some sort of respectful way so this is tiro replying to adam 22 on his podcast back on fig this is a pretty good reply hey i don't give a fuck nigga i ain't trying to hear none of that sad ass vulnerable ass <laughs> whole ass shit bitch <laughs> stick your chest out hole and do your shit because we gonna do our shit and then that's it you feel me like this is what i'm doing over here you feel me hey you know niggas out here calling me idiots calling me dumb calling me stupid you know what i'm saying fire niggas on niggas platform fire homies doing all this shit stick your chest out you feel me fuck it like nigga we ain't trying to hear none of that shit nigga you better get shark motherfucking ass over there all stand week on business too, like fun say like stand on I was like no, let me, I said to God that was brilliant we don't want to hear none of that sorry soppy sad ass shit and it's true it's true and and what he said is true at the end as well stand on it stand on it puff your chest out if he legitimately thought all of those guys weren't contributing to the no jumper because that's another new narrative he's spinning. Adam's throwing out so many narratives to kind of basically distract from him just not fessing up to his own mistakes and saying the most crucial words. I'm sorry. In that whole episode, I think, I don't, I'm not too sure if I heard many sorries about how sorry he was about what happened, how it transpired. It's just loads of kind of vaguenesses and kind of, you know, dancing around certain things and basically making all the excuses possible just to kind of, you know, um, distance himself from any kind of blame or accountability. But one thing that's for certain is that if he legitimately did think these guys are not contributing, like imagine if he was actually a brutal, you know, a, a really cutthroat CEO founder guy who was like you know what even though these guys are my friends they're not contributing to the bottom line the shows are actually getting the most views or the most money are my interviews cool i'm gonna cut all these guys off cut them all off be brutal be cutthroat okay be cold-hearted but then don't start now crying and starting to play the sympathy card on the other end also you can't be both and i think there's a thing nowadays in just culture overall where everybody wants to be both everybody wants to be the boss everyone wants to be the savage but they also want to be the victim when it's kind of opportune and it sort of works for them and i don't think life works that way you have to choose one or the either one of the one or one or the other either you're the aggressor or you're the victim but you cannot be both especially not at the same time maybe you can be both one after the other but not at the flipping same damn time come on now so if he did legitimately think those guys weren't contribute contributing to the bottom dollar of course then cool or the bottom line cool get rid of them get rid of them stand on your business say cool i'm moving a new direction hire all these flipping right wing loudmouths who are going to go on there and start talking about trans issues and gay bathrooms and you know flipping drag queens talking to people in libraries whatever get those people to talk about those same tired topics they talk about all the time and get them on the jumper and basically turn the jumper into you know flipping destiny but with other people on there do that but now he's seeing that he doesn't really want to do that or he's seeing the flipping chasm and the hole that is now left from all those shows leaving and the money is probably not looking as great as it probably would do if those guys were still on and now he's regretting how things basically transpired but you know his arrogance his narcissism doesn't let him just say yep you know what hold my hands up i messed up he still has to kind of blow via and make it weird so i'm glad t Raw basically said that and essentially told him to go and spin on it you know, because there, he's got no absolute time for it whatsoever in the slightest. So big up T-Roll for standing on business on his end and basically saying, hey, I don't care what you say. It's over with. I'm done with that stuff. And then the final bit as well, I thought was hilarious was this bit. <laughs> T-Roll basically flexing and kind of emphasizing that, hey, I'm done. And, you know, I would miss me too. This is hilarious. 
Had that nigga stick his chest out talking about he getting paid more than me. Bitch, look at this shit behind me. And I'm behind you, bitch. bitch. Yeah. Is that you part. losing your motherfucking mind? We was getting paid more. I was, look, I was miss me exactly. too, bitch. Fuck. I was miss me too. <laughs> <laughs> That's a brilliant face, isn't it? I would miss me too. I absolutely love that. So big up Tiro, big up all those guys over there. That's absolutely fantastic. And then of course, there's another bit also here. One more clip I want to play, um, where basically Tiro explains a bit further. Um some of the issues he had over there and just the lack of money that was given i think someone mentioned in the chat that i think tiro said he was getting paid like 300 an episode or 200 episodes or something something crazy something pittance which you'd i think is a pittance for them especially for tiro because he was one of the bigger hosts and you know the guys who'd kind of generate the most views and whatnot so for them to be paid that low was crazy but this is his overall opinions on it and then play the clip you know the pay you know what i'm saying and niggas was like not wasn't making no money and it's just like prove my point to what i was saying and what i you know what i've been saying like you can't you can't show me you can't you can't show me in the group chat oh you guys only made 700 dollars. i'm not making any money and uh, i might cancel the show tomorrow and uh, oh, uh and it's just God. like nigga, I, you can't you can't do me like that i'm like well shit, cause i ain't making no hoes you know what i mean like so Ain't no room for me to be going up in here trying to negotiate, trying to see if I can get a raise. And I'm just a loyal nigga. I'm not finna be, I'm not finna do that. You know what I mean? But also still, I'm, you know, as a businessman, I'm like, hold on. So you make 700 and we got the clip channel, you know, Snapchat or Facebook. We gonna, we gonna add that up. Okay, we got brand deals. We got this. Oh, not only, you, we, what we can't calculate is uh, people living on the channel after they watch our you know what I'm saying? After they watch our show, they're living on the channel. So you wouldn't you wouldn't be able to put that into the analytics to know how much was being made on the channel. But now you do. Because, you know what I'm saying? They just was, you know, so narcissistic and just arrogant. Like niggas was just watching our show only and only gonna show me what was made from our show. So it's like now you do. Because now when you left, you will see the hit. You will see what we brought. You know, and I, I felt it in my gut. I knew it, but I, I couldn't prove it. But I knew we brought people there. I knew we brought subscribers there. I knew we I knew we brought some shit there to fan. Anyway, that's what you said about that, so some really good insights there. But it just goes back to my my main point of view, like it's just a bit upsetting to be honest, from afar to watch this stuff. It happens with podcasts here in the UK also. I don't know, I, I feel like this whole podcasting scene especially within that the hip-hop community and space and whatnot is a real good opportunity for people who are from really humble you know from 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 humble beginnings or from from the hood or from you know deprived neighborhoods and from places where maybe they don't get many opportunities to really really put themselves into position where they can make some real good money and essentially pull their whole entire family and maybe generations to come out of the depths of poverty it's really cool and it's also something that is fairly easy to do Yes, the equipment, you have to buy the equipment and stuff, which is kind of pricey when you begin with. And maybe to start from zero with no views, no subscribers, no downloads is kind of hard. But if you stick at it and you've got a pretty good niche and maybe you've got a good personality and you come across well on camera, it's a pretty easy thing to kind of get right. And for me, for the guys who have the privilege or who have the gift or who have been given, ordained or chosen by the public to be the ones that people love and they want to view and check out and they get all the views, they get all the sponsors. I just don't understand why you just can't make it work or figure it out. Why does it always have to end in beef? Why does it always have to end in like back and forths and nonsense and people firing and all this sort of stuff? It's a genuine opportunity where legitimately people can make money from talking into a flipping webcam you know in their bedroom about nonsense they see on the internet and people can view it and whatnot like why does it always have to end like this why can't people just like figure out the business and make it work because this is the first time in history really people can legitimately take themselves from the depths of poverty from like really low places and pull themselves out there just from being themselves on camera not having to flip in acquiesce to some nonsense boss not having to flip in abide by these stupid rules of a, of a network just by being yourself like and actually the internet actually is like that the more honest you are with your audience usually for the most part the more you get rewarded because they actually like that you're presenting your real authentic self on there so why can't these guys see that gift that they've been given 
that opportunity, that blessing from 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 above or from the universe, and basically use it um, for all its inter- for all its purposes, and kind of you know make it work for the long run why does it always have to end like this i don't like it obviously to view in terms of drama and i've always said on here before that i like this self stuff because essentially it's a it's a weird version of like the kardashians you get to watch these guys kind of you know back and forth bicker and whatnot but it is kind of sad and kind of lame also they get given an opportunity to make real money to make a difference to make a change to inspire people to entertain people mostly and they always make a way to kind of not shoot themselves in the foot but really kind of mess it up in some sort of way and i just don't understand why it's really easy it's kind of fun it looks like because you get to do it with your friends you know having to hire random people that you can work with it's people that you actually like to spend time with and you get to put a camera on and basically you know make something of it along the way why not just make it work why not just figure it out especially because most of these people also are grown-ups we're not talking about people who are like you know young tiktokers we're talking about guys and girls who have kids who have mortgages who have you know bills and stuff who live a regular life who've worked a regular life who worked a regular job and they still don't see this benefit this blessing they've been given and just trying to make it work they kind of always have to kind of you know sprinkle some flipping drama in just to kind of i don't know get some get their rocks off i don't know i don't i don't get it maybe because i'm a one-man show kind of thing i don't understand it but i just think even if i had friends i was working with i'd want to make it work with my friends because it's fun doing it with your friends why get into position where you have to beef but maybe that's out of people's control who knows who bloody knows um yeah quite is right man in the chat yeah it's a lesson about being greasy yeah you're right actually it is a, there is a, there is something about it there is something to be said for not caring about money it's kind of a weird conundrum to be in. You kind of have to care about money, especially if you're at their kind of level. Maybe not on mine because, you know, who gives a fuck? Just talk about what you're not talk about. But when you're on their kind of level and you're, you know, and you're, you're getting like, you know, 50,000 views plus on your flipping live stream and stuff, right? And you're getting 100,000 views on your interviews, you're making decent money. You're probably pulling in more than 10 grand a week. And when those type of monies get involved, usually for most people out there, that's most money you're ever going to make ever in your life or most money you've ever made at until this point so maybe with that kind of money your brain starts to like change you know which is really dumb really everyone should just be doing in theory what kind of joe rogan's doing where despite the amount of money and views and notoriety and fame he's got the show is basically still the same it's just him sitting down with people talking it hasn't changed there's no like intermission with a band playing he doesn't suddenly get up and start doing fucking jujitsu it's just him sitting on the table talking to someone and it kind of has worked because he just kept it basically the same improved it in terms of studio equipment lighting cameras and whatnot here and there maybe the caliber of guests are improving also along the way but the the main crux of the show is what it is the team is very small and it just works maybe that's the thing but i think with these guys when the money gets involved and they start thinking about the money it kind of just changes the quality of the show a little bit in a weird way which is odd um and it kind of makes them feel like they're way more important than what they are also because it kind of because maybe a lot of them as well i kind of think about it also they have this kind of thing what i used to have where you kind of feel like you're like an undiscovered genius you feel like you're like a you're like this um it's really strange feeling that you have where you feel like I'm that guy when you're when you have nothing to show for it right so sometimes when you make it in the podcasting sense it suddenly gives you that see I knew it I knew I was that guy I knew I was that girl I knew I was a boss I knew it and you start to kind of believe legitimately that your shit doesn't stink and then you start to de- develop an ego and it starts to go a bit crazy and I think again to be to get them a little bit of you know to give them some benefit of doubt I'm also sure that it hasn't been analyzed yet, but people need to analyze it. There is maybe something really weird about being a regular person in you from like the age of 25 to no, yeah, a regular person within the age range of like 25 and 45. One day turning on your phone or going on your, on your phone live stream, suddenly becoming famous in that kind of age range from going, being a regular person who works a regular job, who lives a regular life, to then suddenly becoming famous in a way it must be such a trip to kind of figure out in your head so maybe it kind of breaks everyone's brain we've seen it countless times 
you know, Jordan Peterson is the first one that kind of comes to mind. He was a regular lecturer, a regular psychiatrist or psychologist, sorry, living a somewhat regular life. One video goes viral of him arguing with some student outside of some university. And then suddenly his lectures go viral and then he becomes like a big star. And essentially his brain explodes from all the attention and from all the flipping eyes out on him. And then, you know, the benzo addiction, all that sort of stuff goes on and he gets, you know, corrupted by his daughter, who knows. But there is something about that, like making it late in life that's quite nice you know, because you get to enjoy it when you're an adult and it's not like being Justin Bieber and you're 16 and stuff, which is kind of difficult, but it also must be a bit of a trip in your head, especially if you've got like delusions of grandeur. You start to think, yeah, man, I knew I was going to be that guy. I knew it. And you start to act a little bit tyrannical and shit with people. Maybe there's something in that. Who knows? 